Hi and welcome back and today is our second option of the Magic of Mince recipes. So we're adding to our savoury mince one carton of passata, either some mixed Italian herbs or some basil. To make our savoury mince we're going to add a tiny little bit of olive oil in this case to the base of our frying pan or a saucepan would do. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our vegetable bouillon and we're going to saute those until they're nice and soft. So as a reminder again, we've got our small minced garlic. We have one large onion, one medium sized carrot and one stalk of celery. And this would be perfect for 500 grams. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to split the recipe in a moment. So I'll have 250 grams of mince in each one. So let me just get those back in there. There we go. And what we're going to do now is we're going to saute those. Okay, between five and seven minutes have passed. And now you'll see that the carrots, onions, celery and garlic are nice and softened. What we're going to do now is we're going to add the mushrooms. Says, not being able to get them out. And the mushrooms don't take as long and you don't want them to go to mush. So I'm just going to let that stir around for another two minutes and then we're going to add our mince to brown it. So I'm now going to dry fry my mince and you can see it go brown. All I've done is I've just popped the veg to one side. You could take out the pan if you have a smaller pan or you can just add it in as well. But for the purposes of the video, I'm just adding in my meat like so. Stick this up with my other hand for now before I wash my hands. Just going to break the mince up so that it's dry fried. So I'm back having washed my hands and I'm just going to break up the mince. And as you can see, once the mince is cooking there and made in contact with the pan, you'll see what's known scientifically as the Maillard reaction. And that's where the sugars that are present within the beef are turning the mince from a blood red to a bran. So this is where we're browning the mince. So as you can see, it doesn't take particularly very long for the mince to cook when you dry fry. Now some mince that you can get in the store, um, whether that be fresh in the chilled session, section even, um, or in the freezer, uh, standard mince is normally about 20% fat. So that will have a lot of fat and oil which will come off and it will spit in your pan. So you'll certainly need a medium heat for that. Um, lean mince is often classed as 12%, but again, you will still get a lot of oil from that as well. So we have a technique which we teach in school, which is I would take the vegetables out so that we only have the meat in there. And then what we would do, as soon as the mince gets to the stage that it's at now, where it's all brown, we'd pop it through a sieve to drain off any excess fat so that you're reducing the fat, con down, fat content, even, put my teeth back in, um, the fat content down to about 7% or so, so that you're making a lean, a lean dish. Now, obviously, the lower the fat percentage, the extra lean that you've got, the more expensive the cut of meat. Uh, normally, mince comes from the flank region um, of the cow. And in order for this to be extra lean, it needs to be 5%, as I've said before. And usually that has a price indicator within the supermarket. So this one was £2.97, which is very reasonably priced in Aldi anyway, from British farmers. Um, but you can get meat as cheap as one pound something, one pound 90 for a 20% fat. 
but what you'd obviously have to do there is to drain the fat off. So I'm going to mix this vegetables in now. And this is my savoury mince. Now, of course, everything that we cook here in Mrs G's kitchen is all about personal preference. So if you don't like celery or you're allergic to celery, then of course, don't put it in. Same goes for mushrooms, same goes for onions, same goes for carrot. Some people find grating the carrot in works much better and it melts down and adds a slight sweetness. Some people just prefer to have a little taste of onion but not have the texture, like my husband and my son. So what I tend to do with that is just to puree it down and then they never know it's in there and it kind of gets hidden. So we have savoury mince now, which is the standard recipe which we can now use for a bolognese, um, which is a meat-based ragu sauce. Um, or we can make this into a chilli, whatever you would like to do. Now, this is the basis, but what we need to do is add our gravy. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add our gravy. I'll bring this into shop. I'll just take this off the heat for now. So I'm not competing with the, uh, the noise. So I you can see this in a shot. Yes, you can. So we've got a measuring jug here. We have our oxo cube from before. Now, I don't know whether you know, but there's this little hack that was shown on the internet the other day. Not the other day, about, about a year ago now. Everyone nearly always battles on with these little oxo cubes, but what you actually have is a little pillow when you fold it out. And then if you rip the top off like that, you've then got a pouring spout to pop your stock cube in. Who knew? All right, so we're going to make our own little gravy here. No gravy granules in sight. Got a kettle which I've boiled, and for this particular amount of mince, I'm going to add about 400 millilitres of stock. So we're back. We've got 400 millilitres of our OXO, our beef stock, which we're going to add in slowly so it doesn't spit. There we go. And that's going to help cook our mince a little bit longer. Now at the moment that looks very very watery and what we're looking for is a nice reduction sauce. So in order for that to reduce down further and thicken up what we're going to do is add a couple of teaspoons of cornflour starch. But what we don't do is we don't put it straight in. What we do is we put it in with cold water to make a little slurry and then add that into the middle there. And of course, if you do have something like Bisto or Quixo, all these equivalent um, gravy granules, then of course you could use those as well. Um, in terms of GCSE higher skills, what we're looking for is for you to be able to make your own stock and then be able to make a reduction for those higher skill levels. So I'm going to let this simmer away for a little bit until it starts to reduce. As you can see, our sauce has reduced down now. It's been simmering away for 10 minutes. That's what we call a reduction sauce. So it's reduced down in terms of the amount of liquid it has because that excess liquid has evaporated. And the other little bit of science in here is obviously the starch from the corn flour, which we've learned about previously. Uh, whereby those starch granules have gone through the process of gelatinization, where they've reached a temperature of 80 degrees Celsius and they've started to burst and collapse and started to ooze out their lovely viscosity and make this into a lovely, fantastic thickened sauce. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to season with a bit of Susie salt and Percy pepper. Have a quick taste first and see what what we think. So, a tiny little bit of salt, not too much because there is a little bit of salt in that oxo cube that we used before. And where's my pepper? Tiny little bit of pepper just to lift that sauce. A fresh spoon. Taste, no double dipping allowed. Mmm, beautiful. So there's savoury mince, ready to rock and roll. Welcome back. So we do have a savoury mince now, um, which we can add our tomato base and our Italian herbs, 
which is going to give us our bolognese sauce. Now, traditionally, what would happen now is you would have actually added the tomato first and the stock afterwards. But I find that this is a really good standard recipe to have in your freezer or in your fridge to adapt to however the family wants to eat it. So I'm adding 400 millilitres of tomato passata. Equally, tinned tomatoes would work well. I'm going to put approximately a tablespoon or two of mixed herbs and one of basil. Now this particular recipe has um, garlic in already, so you've already got the traditional Italian herbs. And if we let that simmer away for a further, say 10 minutes, we've got a lovely bolognese sauce. We're now going to cook our spaghetti for our spaghetti bolognese. Uh, you don't always have to have one of these little whizzy wig things, um, but this is a tool that I've got to show you um, portion sizes for spaghetti because a lot of people do get confused by how much spaghetti you need to cook. So this is about a five pence piece worth, which is for one person, a 10 pence piece worth for two people, and this one here, probably about the size of a golf ball, for three. So what I normally do at school is I get you to look at putting some in your hand, like so. And say, so, right, does that go on a five pence piece, possibly? See if it fits through there, perfect. So that's gonna be for one person. Pop that in, gonna do the same thing again. So my son and I are gonna have this one and my husband's gonna have some pasta because he doesn't like spaghetti. Who doesn't like spaghetti? He doesn't like spaghetti. And there's another one for one person. Another way to do it is to weigh it, it's about 75 grams per person and that would be the same 75 grams or 80 grams for um, pasta as well for a healthy portion for a day. Now what we're looking for is we're looking for we're looking for a rapid rolling boil now and I'm going to try and zoom in on here so you can see it. This is what's known as a rapid rolling boil. Um, one where I've just played it back for the video before wasn't perhaps as rapidly rolling as I wanted it to be. So this is a rapid rolling boil. This is what we're looking for when we're boiling our pasta. Make sure it doesn't um, bubble over. So we do need to keep an eye on it. You can always reduce the heat down if you need to, but this is the temperature that we're looking for for about 10 to 12 minutes. Just gonna check on my pasta now. So what we're looking for is a lovely, soft, yet firm texture. So that's something that's called al dente. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a fork with my spaghetti tongs, or scooper, I should say. I'm just going to let that cool a little bit and have a little taste. And what I should be getting is a little bit of resistance and yet a little bit of a soft texture too. Hmm, yum. So that's what's known as al dente, which the translation is to the tooth or to the bite. That's what we're looking for. So my spaghetti is ready now. I'm gonna drain it in a colander in the sink safely, um, making sure my hands are well out of the way. I'm gonna twirl it into a bowl, and I'm gonna add a spoonful of my bolognese sauce on top. Perhaps grate a little bit of Parmesan and decorate with basil. Back in a moment. We're back and our uh, Pasta is safely drained. Just going to twirl that into a little nest. There's my 75 grams. Make a tiny little hole in the middle. Then we can pop our bolognese. There's one portion of bolognese directly into the centre. And to finish this off, I'm going to grate a little bit of parmesan, because I happen to have some in the fridge. I should have had my grater out earlier. So, just 
just to go. Tiny little shavings of parmesan. And finish off with a garnish of basil. Voila! Bellissimo!